Welcome, everybody. We welcome you to our service at Praise Tabernacle. We're thankful that you're joining us today. We, we want to welcome every one of you to uh, ask you to reach out to someone that you might know and share this video with them or share this live broadcast with them and let them in on the service today. But we want you to know we're glad that you're part of Praise Tabernacle. You're joining us in wherever you are today. Jesus has a word for you. He's going to touch you. He's going to move in your life in some way if you'll allow him to today. This is the day the Lord hath made, and I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. Why don't you just, let's invite the presence of the Lord in right now. Jesus, we love you. Thank you for this opportunity to gather together wherever we are around the world today. But we're gathering in one mind, one accord for you to do a work. Bless this service in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Worship with the praise team. Porque soy su hijo, porque soy su hijo. Hoy puedo danzar con libertad, porque soy amado, porque soy amado. Dios, puedo danzar en la casa de Dios. 
Dios puedo danzar y disfrutar que somos libres, somos libres por su sangre, libres somos, there is freedom, there is freedom. with us right now and gather everybody around in your home for prayer no matter where you're at right now it is always a time to go before the Lord in prayer hallelujah thank you Jesus if you have any needs God is able God is able to meet every need that you have whether it be big or small God is able I ask right now that we could continue to pray for our city pray for our mayor Pray for our governor. Pray for our state. Pray for our country, our nation, our president. I ask that we could all lift up our hands wherever you've joined us with right now. I ask that we could lift up our voice. That we could call out to Jesus. That we could say right now, God, I need you. I need you to hear my prayer right now, God. I need you to keep me safe, Lord. I need you to keep my family safe, Jesus. I need you to keep my city safe, Jesus. I need you to keep your hand on my mayor, on my governor, on my president, on all the elected officials that are making decisions. I ask you to keep your hands on my neighborhood. Keep your hands on my pastor. Keep your hands on my children. Come on, lift up your voice right now wherever you're at. Worship with the praise team as we sing. We're going to exercise our faith and believe. We're not going to let fear cripple us. We're going to worship. We're going to praise and we're going to magnify Jesus with our faithfulness to him in Jesus' name. Worship with the praise singers as they sing. There is no fear, cause I believe. There is no doubt, cause I have seen your faithfulness, my fortress, over and over.
God of exceedingly, God of abundantly, more than we ask or think, Lord, you will never fail. Your name is powerful, your works unstoppable, all things are possible in you. Lift your voice. God of exceedingly, God of abundantly, more than we ask for thee, Lord, you will never fail. Your name is powerful, your words unstoppable, all things are possible in you. of God right here, right now, and I pray that that same presence that's here is in your home at this very moment, in the mighty name of Jesus. Right now, we're going to give you an opportunity to give your tithes and your offering. Uh, we understand that uh, it's different to do things electronically, but we encourage you to do so. You can text the word GIVE to 833718 Four six two four, and you should see that number on the bottom of your screen. Again, you can text the word "give" to eight three three seven one eight four six two four. If you want to send a check, you can send your check by mail, PO Box nine four two two six, Las Vegas, Nevada eight nine one nine three. Again, that's PO Box four two um, uh, nine four. 226 Las Vegas, Nevada 89193. We thank you for being faithful in your tithes and your offering. We understand that God is, uh, He keeps good score, as Pastor always says. And I can attest to you as I have grown in my walk with God and I have been faithful in my tithing, I have seen the blessings of God come upon me. I'm not trying to encourage anyone or to, to uh, do something they don't want to do, but I, I will testify to you that if you will pay your tithes and be faithful in the little, God will just pour, pour out his blessings upon you. I'm going to pray a word of faith over you, believing that God is going to bless you as you give uh, joyfully and cheerfully. You can go ahead and text again, or you can mail your check uh, to the address that was provided. Lord God, we come before you right now, Jesus. We thank you, God, that you have been good and you have been faithful, Lord God. I pray right now, Lord Jesus, that you would bless every single giver, Lord God. You would bless their finances. You would bless their home. You would bless their health, Lord God. I pray, God, that you would bless those, Lord God, who cannot give but want to give, Lord Jesus. And I pray, Lord God, that you would tug at the hearts, Lord God, of those who have not been faithful in their tithing, Lord God, that you would tug at their hearts and challenge them, Lord God, to change that, Lord God, and that you would pour out the blessings of heaven upon them. 
In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, church, thank you again for being faithful in your tithes and your offerings. God bless. Get past my blame until he called my name. I'm so glad he changed me. Darkness held me down, but Jesus pulled me out. I'm no longer bound. I'm so glad he changed me. See, I'm now a new creation in Christ. The old has gone, there's new life. I live. team for leading us into the presence of the Lord and thank you for joining in with us today in our Bible study and ministry time. I want to um, draw our attention today to the book of 2 Samuel chapter 23 begin with verse number 20. The Bible said and he went down also and slew a lion in the midst of a pit in the time of snow. In the time of snow. Now, I want to just stop right there. And I want to preach a little while today on victory on a snowy day. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you. Thank you for your goodness and mercy. Thank you for your patience with us. Thank you for caring for your children. 
Now, God, you gave me this verse to help somebody. I've used it before. But, God, during this pandemic time, it's a snowy day for some people. It's a troubled day. People are losing jobs. People are worried about their finances. People are facing uncertainty. It's a snowy day. But, God, there's a reason for every snowy day in our lives, and I pray you will give us direction. In Jesus' name we pray. Why don't you say amen? God bless you today. I want to, you know, we live in the desert, and it's already over 90 degrees out here. We've already pushing toward 100, and um, we, we're not even, you know, we're not even into the summertime yet. And so we're looking at, at heat waves, and we're looking at crazy times around us. But many of you, we don't know much about a snowy day in Las Vegas. I grew up in Georgia. We didn't know anything about snow. It took four cars on the street with all the snow on four cars to make six snowballs when it snowed down there. And then we could call, call ourselves having a snowball fight. But you had to run up down the street, never saw it snow. I went to college in 1971. I left and went to Minnesota in 1972. Columbus, Georgia got 18 inches of snow. We had six inches of snow in Minnesota. They had 18 inches of snow. And the only vehicle that the police could get to run was the garbage trucks to ride around in. So they hired the sanitation department to haul the, the, the police officers around. It was a snowy day. Now, in Minnesota, I did see a lot of snow. I saw a lot of cold. I saw it 36 below zero with a wind chill of 118 below. I'm telling you, it was colder than a mother-in-law's love up there. And I, I saw a lot of snow. When my wife and I got married in 1972, or, and I took her back to Minnesota, I found out something about my wife I didn't know. She can't walk in the snow. Every single time we walked out the door, she would fall down. So it was kind of neat. We were newlyweds, and for the first three months of our lives, I got to carry her every time we walked out the door. I just pick her up and carry her. Carry her to the car, carry her from the car into the church. People wondered why I was carrying my wife into the church. It's a lot easier than her just following me, having to drag her. So uh, I want to talk to us about victory on a snowy day. Now, let me set the stage for you. Benaniah was the man that we just read about. And he ranked among David's mighty men. Among the warriors that David had, people that we sometimes know their names and sometimes we don't know their names, one thing about Benaniah, he was not a fair-weather hero. I was reading about those multiple men in the, the 23rd chapter of 2 Samuel. There was Adino who fought against 800, whom slew all of them at one time. And then there was Eleazar. You remember Eleazar was a guy that fought with a sword until he had to pry his fingers off the sword because the sword cleaved unto his hand. And then there was Shammah, one of my favorites, uh, that, that had a war right in the middle of a hill of beans. It was a pea patch. Uh, but he said, I'm not running anymore. And he stood and, and fought. Uh, but as I was reading on through there, I read about a man named Benaniah, and it caught my attention because it was said it was a snowy day when he had to fight a lion. Now, i got to be honest with you. I don't know that there's ever a good day to fight a lion. I have never fought one. So I can't give you an answer about that. But I am sure that I would be at a disadvantage on a snowy day trying to fight a lion. But it's exactly what Benaniah did. You see... I thought how many times our lives has trouble at a bad time. Your freezer will never break down until the day you just came from Costco with $300 worth of meat put in it. The muffler won't fall off your car until one of those days when we only have about six a year when it's raining cats and dogs in Las Vegas. That's when your muffler's going to fall off. Have you ever had those times when you said, oh, I could have handled it if it had just had not been bad timing? Some of you, this pandemic has caused you to be laid off your jobs, and you're thinking, oh, I just was not prepared for this. There's no way to prepare for every crisis that comes along. And we have to understand that bad things happen at bad times. Children come along, we say, oh, we're, we're, we're not prepared. It's too late. She's expecting it's coming. Time to get prepared. I'm telling you, God has a sense of humor. Babies come at the most inopportune times. But God's still the same. God's on the throne. 
I'm talking to somebody in a pandemic today that God's still on the throne. He knows where you are. He knows what you're going through. He knows your situation. He knows your circumstance. He knows your bank account. God's still on the throne. You said, yeah, but I've lost my job. God may have a better job for you. Yeah, but I lost this or I lost that. Let me tell you something. You won't lose anything that God doesn't have a better idea. God, you know, David said, I once was young and now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor a seed begging bread. Oftentimes we think if this had just happened last week, it would be better. But the Bible said that Benaniah had a victory on a snowy day. Too many times we put things off thinking, I'm waiting for the perfect timing for something to happen. I'm going to really step up when this happens, or I'm going to really do good when that happens. I'm, I'm waiting for everything to be right and the circumstances to be better. Honey, you might as well quit waiting for ideal circumstances. They're not coming. They're not coming. Read for me, please, Brother Amy, from Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17 and 18. Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17 says, Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines. The labor of the olive shall fail, and the fields shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. He doesn't stop there. You're talking about a man that's bankrupt. You're talking about a man that's got nothing. You're talking about a man that saw everything he had walk out the back door. You're talking about a man that's in a situation that he's got no control over. And listen to what he says. Yet, Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God what? of my salvation. I will what? Rejoice in the God of my salvation. I will rejoice in the Lord. He said, I'm going to jump up and down. That's what rejoice means. And then he said, I will joy in the God of my salvation. You know what that means? That means to spin around. Woo! I get dizzy doing that. He said, I will rejoice in the Lord. I'm going to jump up and down and spin around and praise him. Why? You're bankrupt. Because God's still good. God's still good. I'm telling somebody here today, you may be going through a hard time, but God's still good. Uh, you may be going through a breaking time, but God's still good. Uh, Job, sitting on an ash heap and scraping boys, uh, said, The Lord giveth, uh, and the Lord taketh away. But blessed be the name of the Lord. Uh, somebody hearing me today, you need to bless the Lord. Uh, you need to thank the Lord. Uh, I don't know what you're going through, but I know how you're going to get through it. You're going to get through it with praise as you go through troubled times. You see, troubled times have a way of coming to all of us. I met people who were called of God to, to do a work for God, and they're sitting around still saying, you know, I can't do that. I don't have this in order. I don't have that in order. Everything's not right. Uh, my marriage, I, I got to wait till it gets in better shape. Uh, I got to wait until I got my habits under control. I got to wait until this is done and things are convenient, honey. It's never going to happen. It's never going to happen. You might as well give your best to God today and say, God, I'm going to do my best uh, regardless of what the devil says or does. Uh, if it hair lips the devil, I'm going to live for you, God. Uh, I'm going to give you my best. You see, I believe that, believe that Benaniah knew that if he didn't conquer that line while he had him in a pit, he might not get another chance. I'm talking to somebody today during this pandemic, and you've been locked in, you've been shut down, your life's been kind of going in circles, you're trying to figure out what you're going to do. You know, getting, getting dressed up to take the garbage out is, is kind of like an excursion these days during the pandemic. I talked to somebody last week that had a birthday, and I asked them where they were going to go for their, for their birthday dinner. They said, huh? I said, you going to the living room or the dining room? Because that's all you can do. Every restaurant's closed for your birthday dinner. That's where it's going to be. I pulled up to pick up some food the other day. I saw one of the nurses that worked for the hospice agency. I did. She and her husband were sitting in the car next to me. I said, what are y'all doing? They said, we're picking up our anniversary dinner. It's not what we had in mind when we planned it back in December, but it's what we got going on right now because this is what it is. You need to understand it is what it is. Uh, quit waiting for perfect circumstances. Have a victory on a snowy day, somebody. Have a victory on a snowy day. 
is Obenaniah realized that if I don't do something right now, while I've got that line in the pit, I may never get another chance. And he didn't put it off because it was a bad day. Now, a man fighting a lion's at a disadvantage on any day. But I can only imagine how bad it must have been on a snowy day, on a slippery day. You know, I don't think that, man, that this man, Benaniah, was depending on his own strength. I don't think he was just trusting in his own wisdom and strength on how to take care of this lion. You see, if you're facing uncertain times today, quit trying to trust in your own strength. You know, Isaiah would go on to say in Isaiah 41.10, I am, you know, he said, Lord, I'm trusting in you, not in me. And in Proverbs, the wise man Solomon would write in Proverbs 3 and verse number 5, listen. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. He said, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not. Lean not. Unto thine own understanding. To thine own understanding. In Read all on. thy ways. In all thy ways. Acknowledge him. Hey, God. I just want you to be in control. God, I trust you. You just be in control. God, I'm not trying to work it out on my own. You be in control. God, I don't think I've got the answers. You be in control. Come on, I'm talking to somebody today. You've been trying to figure it out yourself. You need to learn to trust in the Lord with all your heart. Uh, you need to lean not to your own understanding. You need to quit trying to figure it out on your own and say, God, you're still the one that's in control. You're still the one that made it all. You made it all. The Bible, the, the, the songwriter said he measured the sea in the span of his hands. Mountains were moved at his command. At the sound of his voice, the sun stood still. And there's nothing, no nothing that my God can't do. I think that Ben and I believe that the same God that had delivered David from the lion and the bear and the giant would deliver him. You see, I believe that David sat around in those caves, uh, sat around in those places, uh, and he would rehearse his testimony about the good things God had done for him. They would say to him, David, what was it like? Uh, you know, these were his mighty men. They were in the cave of Adullam. David, what was it like when you came against this? And David, what did it look like when the bear came? I'm going to tell you, I was scared, boys. Uh, this old flesh, my knees were knocking for me, but I realized that I had a faith and a God uh, that was bigger than that lion, uh, better than that bear bigger than that giant. Uh, oh, come on. I'm talking to somebody today. You need to hear a testimony of a preacher today. God is bigger than your circumstance. Uh, God is bigger than your problem. Uh, God is bigger than your failure of yesterday. Somebody hear me today. You need a victory on a snowy day. You see, it takes courage. Courage to stand for the name of Jesus. Courage to step out when nobody else is standing up. You know, when the conditions are not favorable. It takes courage to witness to your neighbors. It takes courage to witness to your co-workers. I'll tell you something. At 15 years old, it took courage for this 15-year-old boy with his knees knocking to walk down the hallways of a high school of over 1,500 kids uh, carrying a Bible in my hand uh, because I knew I had a call of God on my life. Uh, and I would, they would laugh at me. They would make fun of me. Only later, for 25 years later, to call me up and say, would you come and speak at the class reunion? Uh, we need something from God. Uh, we need some answers for our lives. Hear me today, you've got the answer. The answer is Jesus, but you're going to have to have some victories on some snowy days. Benaniah had a difficult task to perform, but he refused to postpone it and put it off any longer. You know, maybe that lion had raided his sheepfolds and taken some of his sheep before. Maybe he'd carried off a few of his lambs. Benaniah said, that's enough. Maybe... Even in the middle of the night, he would hear him roar outside the window of his children. And he would wonder what would happen if he came to my house today. You see, some of you have been fighting some things and you've just been putting it off. You've been putting it off. Maybe you've been having some things that have attacked your life and you're afraid it's going to do it all over again. Maybe the devil's been attacking your home, and maybe the devil, devil's been attacking your children, or maybe he's been attacking your health. Uh, I'm talking to somebody today. Maybe you've been putting off doing something till tomorrow when that line of addiction 
gets away or you get it under control. Uh, I'm here to tell you, quit trying to get it under control and get it to Jesus. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm here to tell you that once you've got that line cornered, uh, you might as well do something with it. Uh, if you're sitting at home during this pandemic, uh, make up your mind. You're going to do something with your situation. Uh, you're going to do something with your circumstance. Uh, you're going to get your prayer life in order where it needs to be. Uh, you're going to get your Bible reading in order where it needs to be. Uh, you're going to get your praise on uh, where it needs to be. Uh, you're going to start reaching out, uh, getting off of Facebook, uh, and reaching out to some people that need to know who God is. Uh, and get your witnessing on today. You need to understand that if you've got that line cornered, you don't have to fight it all alone. There's one who's already won the victory, and his name is Jesus. Uh, the Lord will fight for you, but you're going to have to have the courage to step out by faith, uh, not postpone the battle any longer. You're going to have to step up by faith uh, and say, guess what? I'm going to have a victory on a snowy day. Uh, I'm going to have a victory on a snowy day. Somehow, God, you're going to have to help me. Uh, I don't know what's going to go on, uh, but I need you to fight for me. Uh, I need you to do something for me today, God. Uh, I'll do what I can do. You take one step here. He'll take two. It'll happen every time. God never fails. I can tell you, there are people who have died in a lost condition. They wanted to get back, but they're on the way to hell today because Satan convinced them to put off salvation until it's more convenient. Wait for a better day. Wait until you've done this. Wait till you're older. Wait till you've sown all your wild oats. Oh, somebody... The devil's tried to convince you you're too bad to be saved. That's a lie from hell. God would not be touching your heart today if you were not a candidate for salvation. Uh, God would not be calling your heart today if you were not a candidate for salvation. Uh, I'm here to tell you today is the day of salvation. There's not a better time. David said uh, whenever he went to fight uh, Goliath, uh, he said, is there not a cause? Uh, that big giant is cursing uh, my God. Uh, is there not a cause? Uh, I want somebody to hear me today. There is a cause. Uh, there is a cause. Uh, you need to fight your enemy today. You need to have a victory on a snowy day. If you keep backing up, the devil's going to keep pushing you further and further back. There is a cause. You need to fight for your families. You need to fight for your own loved ones today. As I close, you need to face your fears. You need to face your failures. And you need to move forward. You can have victory on a snowy day if you want to have a victory on a snowy day. There's never going to be a better day for you to slay that giant of addiction than today. There's never going to be a better day for you to slay that giant of anger except today. There's never going to be a better day for you to, 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 to beat that demon of fear and of anger than today. Your pride can go away today if you're willing to have a victory on a snowy day. As I close, I ask you to join me in prayer right now. Whatever it is you've been fighting, whatever it is you've been going through, whatever it is that's been causing you a lot of pain, I wonder today if you're willing to turn it over to Jesus and ask Him to give you a victory on a snowy day. Maybe you're broke, busted, and disgusted, but today can be your day of victory. Let me, join me in prayer right now. Jesus, I, I pray for that one right now that feels overwhelmed. God, that one that's had anxiety and they've woken up in the middle of the night not knowing what tomorrow would hold. Uh, God, those that are battling anxiety attacks right now, uh, those that are battling fear right now, I pull down that stronghold of fear. Uh, I pull down that enemy of anxiety right now. Uh, I curse it. Um, that one, God, that's had anger in their lives, I pray right now, God, they'll get that lion under control. Uh, they'll bring it to Calvary and turn it over to you. Uh, that one that has an addiction in their lives, God. Uh, that one that's been putting off the things they've needed to do until they get a better day. God, I pray right now that you would reach into their homes, their cars, their offices, wherever they are, reach into their hearts, God. If they're willing to surrender it to you, let them surrender it to you right now, God, that you can do the work that only you can do and bring them a victory on a snowy day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Right where you are, why don't you continue to pray? Why don't you continue to ask God to help you, to give you strength, to give you peace in the midst of a storm? Why don't you ask God right now to take away those things you've been putting off 
for a better day and make today that day. If you've not spent any time in prayer, if you've not spent any time in the Word during this pandemic, don't waste a good opportunity to draw closer to God. You can make a difference in your life and that of your family and that of your church. God bless you. We love you. Is our prayer today, God, to keep you.